Today, we're going to break down and analyze the body language and behavior of ex-director of the Secret Service, Cheadle. Greg, tell us about the videos we're going to watch. Yeah, and if you think that this is a partisan issue, you're in for a ride because this is Republicans and Democrats just beating the stuffing out of this woman because she's not answering questions. This is in front of a congressional hearing, and she is giving testimony. That's what you got. Yes. Top officials repeatedly rejected requests from Donald Trump's security detail for more personnel. The next day, the New York Times said this, Mr. Guglielmi acknowledged that the Secret Service had turned down some requests for additional federal security assets for Mr. Trump's detail. So which is it? Because both statements can't be true. Were you guessing or lying when you said you didn't turn down requests from President Trump's detail? Neither, sir, and I appreciate the question. But well, what, what were you doing? Because those statements don't, don't jive. So what I can tell you is that for the event in Butler, there were no requests that were denied. As far as requests- Well, maybe they got tired of asking. Maybe you turned them down so darn much, they said, not worth asking. How many times did you turn them down ahead of that? I think that it is important to distinguish between what some people may view as a denial uh, of a, an asset or a request. Well, is Mr. Guglielmi your spokesperson? He said he acknowledged the Secret Service had turned down some requests. I'm asking how many? A denial of a request does not equal a vulnerability. Well, tell me what it is. There are a number of ways that threats and risks can be mitigate, mitigated with a number of different assets, whether that be through personnel, whether that be through technology, or well, other well, resources. Well, tell the committee which it was. They asked for additional help in some form or another. You told them no. How many times did you tell them no, and what did you tell them no to? Again, I cannot speak to specific incidents, but I can tell you in general terms, uh, the Secret Service uh, is judicious with their resources based on- What does some request mean? How many times? Some indicate requests is plural. So more than once they asked for additional help and you turned them down. What they asked for and how many times did you turn them down? Pretty basic questions. So again, without having all of the details in front of me, sir, what I can tell you is that there are times- You didn't get briefed on how many times you turned down the Trump detail when they asked for additional help? I'm, I'm sorry. You didn't get briefed on that before you came to this hearing knowing you were gonna get asked that question? What I can tell you is that in generic terms, when people, when, when details make a request, there are times that there are alternate ways to cover off on that threat or that risk. But that's not what he said. All right, Chase, what do you got? Let's uh, role play this really quick. Greg, uh, I'll be the person being interviewed. Can you ask me if I robbed a liquor store on Thursday, please? Chase, I know the facts. Did you rob a liquor store on Thursday? Yeah, I, I appreciate that question. I can tell you in, in general terms Answer that I try, <laughs> I try as often as possible to mitigate any desires to perform actions such as the one that you mentioned. And a removal of money from a register doesn't always equal a robbery. And at different times, there are different ways that a person could behave in the way that you're suggesting. And if you if you could imagine hearing this from any other human being in any situation at all, it's the most I'll just say it's 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 a disgusting example of dishonesty and deception uh, to witness somebody in the government in a position of power like this behave like this and then see that it's pretty much commonplace is horrifying. And it, this is a great illustration of the confusion in D.C. These people on both sides of the aisle can't understand the difference between a leader and a person in charge. That's a big thing that's going on in D.C. right now is a confusion between being a leader and being the person in charge. And they seem to think those are the same thing from an audio perspective. I wish that somebody could have gotten her a water bottle up there. Uh, Scott oh, actually God. has superhuman hearing like Spider-Man. So I'm sure this was even harder on you was, listening to this. It was, Let's, it was tell us about gross. this, Scott. Yeah, man. She had dry mouth, <laughs> almost <laughs> all the way dry. It was making all those little clicky sounds and stuff. Oh man, misophonia is what that's called where you can't stand mouth noises when somebody's eating or something like that. And man, this was hard to listen to because it was it was just on my last nerve. I was so mad at her after the first 30 seconds of this, I couldn't stand it. Wait, when um, we hang out, 
when you and I, when we all four hang out, I chew ice cubes like crazy. Where'd Greg go? Mm. He might have had misophonia. <laughs> wow. Yeah. He'll be back. Oh, he'll be Does back. It, can my ice cubes <laughs> bother you? No, no, that's different. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's get back on it. <clears throat> Sorry. So about anyway, Greg. So anyway, Greg's uh, internet just dropped out, so we're back now. So like I was saying, yeah, that could, misophonia, and it gets on my last nerve when I, I can hear all that. So yes, Chase, thank you for being empathetic about that. It did bug me to no end. So I'll, I'll, I went into this mad as a, an old wet head. So she's really still during this. She's, she's got what I want to call her set position that she's in, and she's going to try to work out of that for a while. And it works for a little while, but not for very long. She's using her pen and her hands and their clasp. So that's sort of, she's using the pen as an adapter. We don't see her using it much as an adapter here, but we do see her using, and I'm going to say this is, she's barrier, barriering with her hands like that, clasp like that. And barriers are a tough call a lot of times because some people do this and, and people think they're not into what you're saying or it's a barrier or whatever. Sometimes it's just more comfortable to do that. And we get a lot of comments on, on our, and in, in the comments, when I turn sideways and sit sideways, I go, what does Scott think about what Chase is saying? Because he's turned side. Sometimes those things mean absolutely nothing. You can't see it, but this, this desk I'm at is a little bit short. And so it's hard to keep my legs under it. And so that's why I do that. So um, back to my point, she's she's got her set position that she's going to try to stay in. And when he says, she says, um, no requests, uh, no requests that were denied. Her illustrators are really weak, and so is her voice. As things start going down a little bit. The volume doesn't go weak, but the tone of it gets a little bit weaker as she goes along. Then we see the repeat of all that, everything we've seen so far, and during the second question. And then her confirmation nod, the timing of that is off. I'm always talking about confirmation nods. You're supposed to be like, I didn't do it, no, or yes, I did. So it should be happening on the words. It's like an illustrator. You know, it's your brain emphasizing specific words and phrases. So she tries to stay at this point. She tries to stay in her set position, but she, her stress levels raising, arising quickly. So because he's getting loud, I mean, he, he comes in hot with this one, and and she's used to that kind of thing. Apparently, she tries to make it look like it doesn't bother her because she thanks him for the question at the top and all that. So that's a little that's a lame, I think. But um, she tries to stay in that that set position it's not working and then her again her voice vo volume gets a little bit lower at this point it gets weaker but it gets lower in volume wise uh here as well so she's on the ropes and and there's nothing she can say she's not going to answer the question she's not going to answer any of these questions really all right as i'm sure you can imagine the shooting at the trump rally in pennsylvania has generated a lot of controversy in the media contributing to an already polarizing landscape. This is why we reached out to Ground News to sponsor this video. Their app and their website let us get the full picture on what's happening. They combine the news from around the world so you can get context on the source of the information. So let's look closer at the coverage on President Trump's attempted assassination. Ground News gives me instant access to more than 700 articles reporting on it all over the world with context on each publication's political bias, factuality, based on how subjective or objective their language is, and even who is funding those people. So comparing news coverage is just fascinating to me. So left-leaning USA Today and uh, ABC News downplayed the shooting by writing that Trump was removed from stage after loud noises startled him and rang out in the crowd. The Irish Times went as far as victim blaming, adding that the assassination attempt might even help him win the White House. So right-leaning outlets like the Daily Signal and New York Post were really quick to call out liberal media's despicable coverage, reporting that their bias was on full display. And unfortunately, Moments like these can cause polarizing and often very inaccurate narratives to spread really fast. And you wouldn't know unless you stayed informed through really diverse news sources, something ground news simplifies and excels at. 
And with media bias just running crazy like it is, I can't recommend subscribing to Ground News enough to stay fully informed on topics that, especially ones that tend to go from zero to ridiculous in no time at all, like Donald Trump or the 2024 elections. I am personally in the process right now of writing a book on elite media brainwashing and ground news is one of the most practical solutions I've ever seen. So go to ground.news slash TBP or just scan the QR code on the screen right here. And right now they're offering our subscribers for the behavior panel the same vantage plan that I use same plan for unlimited access to all their features. So subscribing not only supports an independent news platform that's working to make media more transparent, the entire landscape more transparent, you're going to be supporting the behavior panel as well. So her answer is just dancing around the real answer, whatever the fact is or whatever answer is about what they're looking for. So I think the rest of it is just a lame attempt to answer vaguely. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so what interests me here is 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 why why is this the context? Um, the, so I've got very little behaviour, body language here, more the behaviour and the context of what is actually going on here. So I'll start with this: those who are about to die, we salute you. This is the Colosseum. This is the Colosseum, and and ultimately there is showboating and and grandstanding going on here. This is bipartisan, bipartisan, and both groups have to lay this on a bureaucrat because ultimately if the buck can stop there the buck stops rising and and of course you you instantly go well who appointed this person or well, don't go there if you're trying to be bipartisan because one of the group will have to say look that's not important who who gave this person the job because that was president biden and it's no longer bipartisan anymore so both groups have to make the buck stop here and that's why if you're you know an american citizen right now or or anybody in the world and hoping to get some answers this is not the place you're ever going to get any answers because this context is not about getting answers it's about ripping somebody who who absolutely could be culpable or not but we're never ever going to really know from this inquiry because it's not an inquiry of of any sort it's a public display of incredulity and and so um what we're getting here which is which is not what we see when we see really good inquiry going on really good interview technique going on is we're getting binary questions with you know i want you to answer yes or no to really complex situations which means you will never get an answer that will ever be helpful and and nor should you want one from this because this is the roman colosseum we are about to see somebody die here and and be sacrificed here for the for for something else uh, so let's let's see what we what we get on this you know a, bi- a binary question will never help with the complexity of truth i would say greg what do you got on this one yeah in the interrogation where we call those leading questions yes and no you're projecting what you want to hear and you know you're putting the person at odds with self they're useful occasionally to redirect a conversation but if you're in an intelligence conversation intelligence interrogation, they're useless because you're projecting. What we use those for is to redirect conversation. We use them all the time in business. Let's talk about what body language is and isn't. If you don't watch this all the time, you've never heard us say this. What it isn't is magic. People come here looking for, I want you to read this guy's mind. That's not what we do. What body language is, when we talk about body language and behavior, when we're looking for a baseline and a deviation. Our bodies are designed to communicate what we think. So you'll see us like Chase was doing it when I was poking him about robbing a liquor store. He was doing something back. Well, he's trying to send his message. Well, our body, as long as our message from our mouth and our message from our brain is the same, you don't see a whole lot of deviation. It's usually pretty normal. It's when you've got one track playing in your mind, another one in your will, I meaning you want to say one thing, but your mind knows the difference, that you start to see all these deviations. You, you start to see bunch up and that kind of thing. Let's talk about a couple that she has here because you guys have covered almost everything I had. And there's just a couple I wanted to hit. You had some I didn't have that were beautiful. Love that, Chase, in the beginning, talking about how she's evading. What's interesting is 
the questions she answers, and, and Scott, you said you, you think it's a barrier. I agree with you because we just talked about something in your head or some stimulus causes a change. When we see the barrier come up, when there's a stimulus, we know it's a barrier. It's not just a normal movement for the person. And it comes up over and over. And let's add another thing. When she's talking about SOP, when she's talking about standard operating procedure, her hands come up and she talks and she moves her, her body. The minute she starts talking about facts about what happened or didn't happen, she balls up. She closes up. That's a good sign. That's a barrier. So what we're going to look for here is looking for what's normal for her when she's speaking. And then when does she go to the other place? Because chat gtp or whatever other ai you want to use as long as there's written documentation about what the process is could have done a finer job than she did right here it could have said policy is and given you exactly what policy is so what we're seeing here is covering herself and mark i agree with you there's no way she was going to come out of this hole and in fact one of these ladies gives her the option to come out right now and i pray would have said yeah i'm done with this and walked off from it yes Top officials repeatedly rejected requests from Donald Trump's security detail for more personnel. The next day, the New York Times said this, Mr. Guglielmi acknowledged that the Secret Service had turned down some request for additional federal security assets for Mr. Trump's detail. So which is it? Because both statements can't be true. Were you guessing or lying when you said you didn't turn down requests from President Trump's detail? Neither, sir, and I appreciate the question. Well, what's, what were you doing? Because those statements don't, don't jive. So what I can tell you is that for the event in Butler, there were no requests that were denied. As far as requests- Well, maybe they got tired of asking. Maybe you turned them down so darn much, they said, not worth asking. How many times did you turn them down ahead of that? I think that it is important to distinguish between what some people may view as a denial uh, of a, an asset or a request. Well, is Mr. Not... Guglielmi your spokesperson? He said he acknowledged the Secret Service had turned down some requests. I'm asking how many? A denial of a request does not equal a vulnerability. Well, tell me what it is. There are a number of ways that threats and risks can be mitigate, mitigated with a number of different assets, whether that be through personnel, whether that be through technology, or well, other well, resources. Well, tell the committee which it was. They asked for additional help in some form or another. You told them no. How many times did you tell them no, and what'd you tell them no to? Again, I cannot speak to specific incidents, but I can tell you in general terms, uh, the Secret Service uh, is judicious with their resources based on- What does uh, some requests mean? How many times? Some indicate requests is plural. So more than once they asked for additional help and you turned them down. What they asked for and how many times did you turn them down? Pretty basic questions. So again, without having all of the details in front of me, sir, what I can tell you is that there are times- You didn't get briefed on how many times you turned down the Trump detail when they asked for additional help? I'm, I'm sorry. You didn't get briefed on that before you came to this hearing knowing you were gonna get asked that question? What I can tell you is that in generic terms, when people, when, when details make a request, there are times that there are alternate ways to cover off on that threat or that risk. But that's not what he said. That risk. But that's not what he said. He said they were denied certain requests, some I, requests. I, this I, is your I, spokesperson, not me talking. This is the Secret Service talking. I, and, it, and, and what a change from absolutely false, unequivocally false to, oh, by the way, there were some times where we didn't give them what they wanted. That's a huge change in five days. And the fact that you can't answer how many times you did that, that's pretty darn frustrating, not just for me, but for, for the country. I hear your frustration. Let me ask you this. Were any of those requests denied to President Trump's detail after you knew about the Iranian threat? What I can tell you, again, I don't know the specifics, is that there are times when we can fill a request. It doesn't necessarily have to be with a Secret Service uh, asset or resource. We can fill that request with locally available assets. You spoke and to anyone at the White House since July 13th? Yes, I have. Who'd you talk to? I have briefed the president and the vice president. Talk to the first lady? No, I have not. Talk to the White House staff, anyone in the White House communications? No, I have not. Have you talked to the counter sniper who took the shot that took out the bad guy? Yes, I have. And can you tell us about that conversation? I would not want to reveal conversations that I've had with my employees.
But that's exactly the kind of information the American people want to know. American people who pay your salary. I understand. This is an ongoing investigation. and I Who's all doing the investigating at Secret Service? I know the Inspector General, but is there also an internal investigation in addition to the Inspector General? We are conducting a mission assurance investigation internally, yes. You know what it looks like, Director? It looks like you won't answer some pretty basic questions. It looks like you got a 9% raise and you cut corners when it came to protecting one of the most important individuals, most well-known individuals on the planet. A former president, likely the guy who's going to be the next president. It looks like you guys were cutting corners. That's what it looks like to me. Is that true? I am here today because I want to answer questions, but I also want to be cautious. You might want to, but you haven't answered. I don't think you've answered one question from the chairman, the ranking member, or, or me. Well, we've got a lot of other people asking. We'll see if your, if your record improves, but right now you haven't answered, I don't think, any questions. I yield. Does anybody know if she was in the field or not? She spent she 27 in years in Secret Service, and she was the field agent in charge of the Atlanta field office. Yeah, she, was, she was personal protection, I believe, to to Biden and Dick Cheney. Jill, Jill Biden is a person. Oh, Jill Biden, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, so look, I'm going to try and listen very carefully to what she's saying. What I can tell you... You shouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, I know, I shouldn't. I should, ju I should just listen to the guy berating or berating and not listen to any of the answers uh, because, because then it would be a fait accompli. Uh, what I can tell you, she says, okay, so there's stuff that you can tell us and there's cl then clearly stuff that you can't tell us. Well, that, that, that may become important. Uh, for example, I would not want to... Um, um, uh, tell you conversations I've had with my employees. Okay, that kind of makes sense. You have a duty to your to the privacy of your employees, um, and and maybe that overrides your duty to this particular inquiry. I don't know the power that inquiry has. It can certainly subpoena, but whether it has any clearance or even public clearance to know details well I, clearly it doesn't i mean because she's not answering questions so there may be something around that the guy says you won't answer some pretty basic questions okay well is she keeping secrets well that would make sense for somebody in the secret service wouldn't it i mean you can't be branded you can't have a secret service and then just like talk to the public about stuff you can't have both if you want a secret service they can't go into a public place and just go well here's what was going on everybody because it might be secret for a reason it's a pretty weird secret service because because it 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 oversees a whole bunch of stuff that don't seem to be connected uh, in any kind of way i'm not quite sure how it got into the position of overseeing what it oversees but ultimately it's called the secret service so i'm going to guess if it stays on brand and does what it's meant to do you're not going to hear very much from it certainly to people who don't have any clearance and uh, to, to the in front of the general public. Now, hang on. If the guy would let her answer, if he'd let her complete her answer, we might get something. She says, I want to answer questions. Also, I want to be cautious. And then he cuts her off. OK, what do you want to be cautious of? You want to answer questions, but also you want to be cautious. OK, can you just please tell us exactly what you need and want to be cautious about so we can have that in mind going forward? We'll have somebody a little bit later on onto that and go, oh, OK, like you have to be cautious about some stuff. We'll hear some, one of these interviewers suddenly become bright about what might be going on here. Uh, but look, from my point of view, we've got a secret service. Should we really expect to hear anything from them? Uh, in my mind, I'm like... No, you wouldn't get MI6 or MI5 there going, let me tell you everything. You wouldn't even be able to see who they are. You wouldn't even see any pictures of them because they're, they're secret, you know? Uh, Greg, what do you got on this one? However, when you make a mistake and you're called on it and it's clear you made a mistake, you can simply say, we made a mistake, we're investigating, here's what we know to now that I can mm -hmm. share. You can do that. You can be forthcoming. And the world I came from, the intelligence world, we always say there's no excuses there are reasons that will exonerate you in, in the future. Own up to whatever happened, get it done and move on. 
Otherwise, if you're consi- if they think you're hiding something, it's ugly. It's an ugly place to work. Uh, so let's talk about what's going on between these two people, because I agree with you. I think he's limiting her ability to speak. And I think we see some of her response to that. She tries something I always teach people in business to do. It's effective. I call it no public displays of stupidity. When one person starts screaming, you shouldn't scream, too. You should go, Mark, I can tell you're upset. What do we have to do to get past this? But I usually give you 30 seconds after you've ranted and screamed so you feel kind of stupid. And then I say that. She tries that, and he steps right back on her. That's when she does something. She starts to look a little frustrated. She starts to go back. When she opens her hands, she goes back to reading the SOP. It's standard policy. It's standard process. It's whatever word she uses. But that's what she means. It's process or policy to do this. I can't tell you this about she tries to avoid another time when she says, I can't tell you what I had to say to my to people that work for me. But she doesn't have any facts. She doesn't say, but what we do know is. That's what you want to hear her say. And she says, I want to answer questions with an uplilt. That doesn't sound like she really wants to answer questions to me. And it could be because of his style and her style and banging into each other's heads. Or it could simply be that she didn't come there to say anything, which is my guess. She came there with protected information. And we're going to watch her body language. It's going to get boring watching her go, oh, um, I don't know what happened exactly. Or SOP is just keep watching it. It becomes a comedy. Turn it off. Turn off the sound and then go back and figure out which one is which. Scott, what do you got? All right. She's a little more confident here. You know, so it does not much, but she's because I think she's trying to, to, to turn on her thing. Or, OK, let's go. Let's do this, man. So I think it's her fight coming out at this point. So her, that's why her voice tone and, and volume are a little bit stronger. And uh, but at the same time, if you listen to it, she sounds a little more. She The sound of it sounds odd. It sounds more relaxed as she's talking, because I think she's trying to pull that thing where like what you're talking about, Greg, somebody blasts off and you try to calm them down. So maybe that's what she's trying to pull here. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work at all in this situation. And uh, then, she, but then she's adapting with her right, that right hand and a pen. So her stress level is obviously rising. And then after the question, uh, did you talk to the, to the Secret Service sniper, in other words, she gets really still and her cadence is rushed here because she's trying to get through it and she keeps adapting with that right hand so that's that's a question that that got after she didn't she didn't want to talk about that at all i think a couple of times in here we see her answer things that she was i think she must have been told don't answer anything don't say anything she's like what do you mean don't answer anything okay you can do that yeah i can i can pull that off i think she tries it doesn't work very well so after that for me there's nothing body language wise much different mm-hmm. Is that everybody? No. Yeah. Oh. Chase? That was two, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't go. Oh. Oh. No, you did. You did, I thought. It was Mark, and then Mark threw it to Greg. No? Oh, you're right. I'm thinking it was the last one. I thought it was the one I got stuck <laughs> on. Doing just this just so long. everybody knows, this is our second episode today. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our brains are already a little bit fried. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Okay. Chase, what do you got? So let's zoom out on this. And let me ask you, as you're watching this video, a hypothetical question. If you got a sneak peek into somebody who has likely caused or been responsible for the attempted assassination of someone and their leadership and personal failures almost contributed to someone being killed on live television and other people being actually killed and wounded. So you have that data point, And then you observe, this is all hypothetical, of course. Then you observe the following behaviors in this person, a lack of uh, emotional response, a complete lack of remorse, a total lack of candor and honesty. Self-preservation is the top priority of that person. A lack of emotion when being asked about responsibility, no ability to take accountability or admit a mistake, no guilt or shame whatsoever, and a total disconnection from humanity such that survival and looking good was their central focus and desire. So here's my question with this hypothetical. What kind of person would that be who would be capable of all of those things? And there might be a word that comes to your mind, and maybe you're right. That's all I got. Doesn't seem very empathetic, does she? (laughs) 
She seems mean. Seems like a Secret Service agent to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I can <laughs> see some jobs that that would fit particularly well. Yeah. <laughs> that risk. But that's not what he said. He said they were denied certain requests, some I, requests. I, this I, is I, your spokesperson, not me talking. This is the Secret Service talking. I and, it, and, and what a change from absolutely false, unequivocally false to, oh, by the way, there were some times where we didn't give them what they wanted. That's a huge change in five days. And the fact that you can't answer how many times you did that, that's pretty darn frustrating, not just for me, but for, for the country. I hear your frustration. Let me ask you this. Were any of those requests denied to President Trump's detail after you knew about the Iranian threat? What I can tell you, again, I don't know the specifics, is that there are times when we can fill a request. It doesn't necessarily have to be with a Secret Service uh, asset or resource. We can fill that request with locally available assets. You spoke and resources. to anyone at the White House since July 13th? Yes, I have. Who'd you talk to? I have briefed the president and the vice president. Talk to the first lady? No, I have not. Talk to the White House staff, anyone in the White House communications? No, I have not. Have you talked to the counter sniper who took the shot that took out the bad guy? Yes, I have. And can you tell us about that conversation? I would not want to reveal conversations that I've had with my employees. But that's exactly the kind of information the American people want to know. American people who pay your salary. I understand. This is an ongoing investigation. and I Who's all doing the investigating at Secret Service? I know the Inspector General, but is there also an internal investigation in addition to the Inspector General? We are conducting a mission assurance investigation internally, yes. You know what it looks like, Director? It looks like you won't answer some pretty basic questions. It looks like you got a 9% raise and you cut corners when it came to protecting one of the most important individuals, most well-known individuals on the planet. A former president, likely the guy's going to be the next president. It looks like you guys were cutting corners. That's what it looks like to me. Is that true? I am here today because I want to answer questions, but I also want to be cautious. You might want to, but you haven't answered. I don't think you've answered one question from the chairman, the ranking member, or, or me. Well, we got a lot of other people asking. We'll see if your, if your record improves. But right now, you haven't answered, I don't think, any questions. I yield. The shooter began shooting at 6.11 p.m. Eastern on July 13th. NBC reported that at 5.51 p.m., 20 minutes before the shooting began, the state police informed the Secret Service of their concern. Now, the rally was not paused at that point, correct? No. And according to NBC, just two minutes later, at 5.53 p.m., the Secret Service notified its snipers about the gunman. The rally wasn't paused at that point either, correct? No. Let me show you some video footage by rally goers. If you could play the video on the screen up here. This was taken two minutes before the shooting started. If you could turn up the volume. Dangerous people. Criminals. Criminals. We have criminals. criminals. We have people that should not be here. Right it's much tougher than now. It happens you want to fly out on the road. Right now. Right now. Up here. Ma'am, that doesn't look like suspicious behavior. That looks like threatening behavior to me. And the rally wasn't paused at that point either, correct? I can tell you, as I stated earlier, sir, that the moment that the shift uh, surrounding the president were aware of an actual threat. That's a threat right there. The guy's on the roof and everybody's yelling at him. Yes. And, and directing the officer's attention to him. The rally was not paused at that point, correct? We are currently still combing through communications and when communications were passed. Well, I can point you to this communication. It's two minutes before the shots started ringing out. Director Cheadle, yes or no? Was there ever a moment where the Secret Service actually considered pausing the rally? The Secret Service would have paused the rally had they known or been so told the answer is there no. was an actual threat. The answer is no. Correct? I can, I can speak to you in generalities. No, no, I don't want I generalities. Don't I want specifics. The, communications the answer were... is no. You did not consider pausing the rally, correct? The people that are in charge of protecting the president on that day would never bring the former president out if there was a threat that had been identified. Well, they did, because we've now identified three points in the, in the 20 minutes before the shooting. Okay. Mark, what do you got? 
Uh, just just one thing. Look, if, if we're looking for full answers, and and I, I Chase, I totally get your point. Like regardless of what happens here, like somebody is responsible, and 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 it's most likely this person here. But if we'd like to know for absolute sure, rather than rely on the incredulity of these public servants who are up there, I guess, on our behalf, just getting angry at her and berating her. If we wanted to know details for sure, this isn't the way to go about it because she's not being allowed to finish her answers uh, because my guess is, is they don't want the answers. Like, that's not, that's just not useful at, at this point. What's useful is a public display from the people's representatives of of incredulity, of just just not getting how um, inept uh, this situation is. And I totally, totally get that. If it was, you know, one of my country's leaders, you know, or ex-leaders getting shot at, I would feel pretty upset for the democracy. And so, yeah, be absolutely upsetting. Now, if I wanted to know what's really going on, I probably wouldn't go, hey, representative, Take her in a room and just shout at her and don't let her answer. And let's pretend we're trying to get answers, but we won't we won't get them at all. How about that as a, as a public display? I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that. So we're not getting full answers. I will say that um, the, but we do get the person on the roof was never identified as an actual threat. So it seems like there's there's potential threats, but we don't get to to understand what a potential threat would look like and when a potential threat becomes an actual threat. But just it seems like from what she's saying, when somebody was seen on the roof, yeah, that wasn't put under the criteria of actual threat because it seems like if it had been seen as actual threat, that person would have been neutralised immediately. And I guess people's incredulity is it took... It took the person to, you know, release bullets from a gun for it then to hit actual threat. And and, and everybody's going, well, that's a bit late for that because the people on the ground were saying, hey, that looks like a threat. Well, yeah, there's a civilian going, it looks like a threat and actual threat. But my problem with it is we don't get to hear her gradation of of that and maybe never will we because that may may be some kind of proprietary or secret thing because if i knew what an actual threat looks like i'd then know how to look not like an actual threat if i if they would reveal to me that and so you know maybe they're not going to reveal what an actual threat looks like uh scott what do you got on that one the thing gets on my nerves when I've trained, and I've, I've trained with uh, every time I've trained with the Secret Service or trained them, let me tell you, they're not like what we're seeing here at all. And what we saw that day, they're not like that at all. They're spot on. They don't miss anything, man. That's what's bugging me about this. Is they they're 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 so smart, and they they have an eye on everything. That's what that's why this bothers me so much. I don't know. What, I don't know what happen with all this but this is not the norm for what i'm familiar with with those folks at all not even a little right. bit yeah so anyway so on this one her nose are pretty er, the nose that she says are pretty strong when she goes through here and but she's still doing that light adapting with the hand with the thing there mine are all going to be really short on these uh her adapters still are really light uh, her, con her confirmation nods are really light everything st seems to be shutting down on her so far uh, because she's got inner dialogue going on up there, and she's thinking, "I got to structure this. What I'm going to say?" And she's putting these things together before she says them. She's got prepared answers, I'm sure. Uh, you know, from a, a point she's going to cover, but she has to think up the specifics of, of the answer for what's being asked. So I think overall, she's she's pretty much stiff and fairly frozen in most of this. She's got vocal fry and a really small illustrators as she goes along. Her voice starts changing. The illustrators get smaller. Her hands start getting closer to her body. And her, at this point with this guy, her voice sounds actually submissive here as she starts giving the answers. I don't know what her, I don't know what her, I keep trying to give her credit and thinking she's got some uh, tact she's using here against this guy, but I, I'm really not seeing it because she's, 
she's changed from the last time because she's starting to shut down. She seems more submissive. It's just, but I can't imagine what she's thinking doing this. And I, but, and speaking of the guy asking questions, I think he's trying to be aggressive here, but I don't think he's an aggressive person at heart. So I think what he's wanting to do isn't really coming off as aggressive as he would want it to to in, in a perfect world because man he's got some good questions and points there but if it, but he doesn't ram them home like the like the last question so i think if if that had kept up if they'd kept that stuff up with her i think that she would have collapsed not physically collapsed but i think her her argument would be so bad or her answers would be so bad it just would the whole thing would have collapsed on him greg what do you got I would say this. Remember, we're talking about Secret Service. We're not talking about a field agent at this moment. Doesn't matter where she came from. She's a bureaucrat. And bureaucrats are good at exactly what she's doing. Staying alive, trying to stay alive, trying to keep their bureau out of, out of arm's way, whatever you want to say. However, there are a couple of things. I'm going to go back to the thing I've pointed out already. When she is forced into a place where she can't spout SOP, this entire interchanges, her body language locks up. She goes closed. She starts crossing her arms and gripping her hands and doing all those things, including at one point, something I always call sacred space, making a barrier between self and the person, and then doing something to comfort self to make that space its own. So she's got a very curt no when she's asked a question, very short vowel. Usually you can tell long vowels, people are trying to get approval. Short vowels are turning you off. She does a lip grip, but Chase, one of the things you talk about all the time, immediately after she says no, she does that. And it's so quick that she, it makes you want to know why. So then she starts to veil this whole thing in there's an investigation going on. Well, if you want to make this really easy, you say, we got an investigation. We've covered these nine topics. We still have four more to go. It's easy. That's all you have to say. Now it looks like you're talking about a process. People go, okay, well, th that makes sense. They might ask more specifics, and then you say, Look, I, I'm not going to go into that because it might compromise investigation. Just know that we are two thirds of the way through and here's the progress. She doesn't do that. She does the thing that we see people who claim to be intelligence operatives all the time say, I can't tell you. I'd have to kill you. Well, no, you don't. You just avoid the question. If you're a good intelligence operative, you not avoid questions. It's also a thing. I, I've got a book called um, The Most Dangerous Business Book You'll Ever Read. And I talk about investigating accidents. You've got a number kind of one book. Yeah, wasn't it number yeah, one, Greg? Yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was number one digital Yeah, at one point. Yeah. The, um, but yeah, and, and I just re-released it with some updates. But the, the key for me in there is talking about investigation goes all the way back to all my interrogation days. Number one, do it quickly. While people's memories are real and they've not had time to rationalize, or use cognitive dissonance for why something happened. So it gives you the chance to go and get information now. There's also this thing we call the five S's, and this has got nothing to do with Lean Six Sigma, if you're one of those guys listening. This is about how do you treat prisoners and get information. And one of those words, and I'll use the word that we used, is segregate. You don't want people sharing stories because then the details get convoluted. So the longer you wait, if it's nine days and you haven't investigated the ground truth, then it's too late. It's already going to be messed up and make a mess of it. If you're what if you're in business, you should remember that when somebody gets hurt. I, I work in corporations for two decades. If you have an injury, you investigate that immediately before people start to have a reason why something happened. Uh, but she's clear. There are no when she gets to a point where she is, there are no forthcoming facts. You can tell because she's barriered. She's going to stop. She's going to come up with a reason. When you get back to where she's moving her hands, she's not giving you any content anyway. She's giving you yeah. SOP. Chase, what do you got? So true. And I train these folks. I've worked in tactical message with Overwatch, and we call them a DM or a designated marksman for a lot of those missions. Uh, but I will say, here's what constitutes a threat to the U.S. Secret Service. There's three things, and they call it the threat triangle. Does the person have the capability to commit the act? Do they have the opportunity to commit the act? Those are two different things. And do they have intent? Can you establish some kind of intent? Uh, so that's what establishes a threat. I think maybe a guy on a rifle fits all those three. They certainly would in my military days. Uh, but this is obvious deception. And Mark, to your point about her being interrupted, I, she does get interrupted a lot. Somehow, I think that if they didn't interrupt her and let her talk for 16 hours, I still don't think we would have uh, many answers. Who, uh, who knows? But the moment a person says, I can speak to you in generalities, you're not going to get anything honest out of that person. And for Congress or any lawyer out there, it's or anybody, 
in negotiation. It is best to paint a person into a behavioral corner than back them into one. And let me break this down. Imagine if you started your line of questioning with identity, agreement, and intention. Those three things. Those three things are part of the system I teach at NCI to establish what we call the self-inflicted corner. We get them into a self-inflicted corner. So it's better to talk them into their own corner than back them into yours. And from identity, we're asking about who they are as a person first. Get them to commit to, are you the kind of person that X? So like saying a question like, director, would you say you're an honest person? Or ma'am, would you agree that you want to help our country and that the truth is what's most important today? Would you agree to that? Then we get into agreement, which is step two. Get them to understand the common ground that you both share. Saying something like, ma'am, uh, we both serve the people of this country and both of us are regretful of what happened. We both also agree, I think, that this was a really unfortunate event that took place. So common ground. Next is intent. Ask them about their intent. So ma'am, is your intention to ensure that the people in the United States get the information they need? Or would you say your career and reputation is more important? Get them to agree to that before you start those lines of questioning. You get them to back themselves into that corner. And then when you start asking those questions, they've just made those agreements, not just about what they intend, but about who they are as a human being. Scott, what do you got? Uh, I think I already went. I think you did. Go too. again. Go again. <laughs> go, go, go again. The Secret can... Service, they're not like that. <laughs> Man, we've had this been a long day. The shooter began shooting at 6.11 p.m. Eastern on July 13th. NBC reported that at 5.51 p.m., 20 minutes before the shooting began, the state police informed the Secret Service of their concern. Now, the rally was not paused at that point, correct? No. And according to NBC, just two minutes later, at 5.53 p.m., the Secret Service notified its snipers about the gunman. The rally wasn't paused at that point either, correct? No. Let me show you some video footage by rally goers. If you could play the video on the screen up here. This was taken two minutes before the shooting started. If you could turn up the volume. Dangerous people. Criminals. We have criminals. We have people that should not be here. We have people that should not be here. Ma'am, that doesn't look like suspicious behavior. That looks like threatening behavior to me. And the rally wasn't paused at that point either, correct? I can tell you, as I stated earlier, sir, that the moment that the shift uh, surrounding the president were aware of an actual threat. That's a threat. Right there, the guy's on the roof and everybody's yelling at him Yes. And, and directing the officer's attention to him. The rally was not paused at that point, correct? We are currently still combing through communications and when communications were passed. Well, I can point you to this communication. It's two minutes before the shots started ringing out. Director Cheadle, yes or no? Was there ever a moment where the Secret Service actually considered pausing the rally? The Secret Service would have paused the rally had they known or been. So the told answer is no. It's an actual threat. The answer is no. Correct. I can I can speak to you in generalities. No, no, I don't want I generalities. Don't know I want all specifics. Of the the answer were... is no. You did not consider pausing the rally. Correct. The people that are in charge of protecting the president on that day would never bring the former president out if there was a threat that had been identified. Well, they did, because we've now identified three points in the, in the 20 minutes before the shooting. Let me point you to something else, uh, which is the building that the shooter was perched on, seen here. This building is called the AGR building. I'm sure that you're familiar with it. Um, it's no more than 150 yards from the stage where Donald Trump stood. Yet the security perimeter was drawn such that the AGR building was placed outside of it. Director Cheadle, according to the Washington Post, the AR st AR-15 styled rifle used in the shooting had, had a range of 400 to 600 yards. And therefore the AGR building is, was clearly within rifle range of the stage, correct? Yes. 
NBC News has reported that in the days before the rally, the Secret Service had identified the building as a vulnerability that required special attention, correct? That's reporting from NBC? Yes. So I am still looking into an active investigation. I know, but it's been nine days. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, should, you should know that, right? And yet, despite the fact that the AGR building was in rifle range of the stage and it was flagged as a vulnerability, this building was put outside of the Secret Service's security perimeter. And I, I, I respectfully submit the security, Secret Service must expand its security perimeter to account for the kinds of weapons that can be used outside the perimeter to endanger the protectees inside the perimeter, ma'am. Let me turn your attention to some conspiracy theories that have been uh, circulating and ask you to uh, comment on them. First, you have not found evidence that the incident was a staged shooting, right? Correct. And you haven't found evidence that this was a result of a conspiracy of high-ranking government officials, correct? Correct. And you have not found evidence that this incident was in fact directed or perpetrated by a foreign state or entity, right? And, th and that's the last question, but I'll let the director answer that, please. Not at this time. Thank you, I yield. Uh, Chase, what do you got? Let's just look at these three questions at the end of this clip here. They all share the exact same thing in common. There's no evidence of anything to suggest these theories are accurate. They all have that in common. She's very direct on the first two instances, using the word correct right away. No hesitation. On the third question about foreign states being responsible with the same lack of evidence, she leaves a window open for the possibility of it. And there's hesitation there, a little bit more than the two correct that we heard. I'm wondering why this would be left ambiguous and the other questions would not have the same answer as being not at this time. Because she uses not at this time. Why wouldn't that be the answer for the other two things? And is there some political motivation? Maybe you can let us know in the comments with a 17 paragraph description of your opinion. Uh, Scott, what do you got? All right. Uh, I don't have much on this one at all because there's not a lot happening here. So body language wise, and I just focus on the body language part. She's adapting with that pin, just clicking the squat out of that thing. So I think her, her uh, stress level is definitely up here. And um, she that that's pretty much all I, I got in there. The rest of it's just that same old stuff we've been seeing. And I don't want to go over that again. Greg, what do you got? More of the same. I'm seeing anytime she's forced to answer yes and no questions, she does. She's forced to here. She's using more of that cloak of secrecy from the investigation. And there's a little disgust in her face, I think, when there's talking about the re the uh, reported by NBC. But that's about all I saw. Um, not much. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, j just same as you, Chase. It's really notable that she does not at this time to that right. foreign entity being involved. It does it does open up. It certainly doesn't close down possibility, does it? It leaves it open. I'm yeah. with you, Chase. Is that is that to give her some status in the room to go? Well, we better keep this person on because she she might there might be something bigger happening here. But but the point is is we just don't know because that question isn't isn't you know followed up on. Well, tell us more about the potential for that. And even if it was followed up on, I would assume she's going to tell us nothing about that because the last thing you want to be doing is broadcasting to the world. We know who, we know the foreign entity involved and we, we, we know who you are. You'd want to keep that to yourself, you know, because there's some value in the secrecy around that and not just broadcasting. You don't broadcast it out until you see a really clear advantage to publicly letting them know that you know that they're involved. Um, so, so look, you know, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't in this particular situation. Again, I go back to the fact that that's the situation. Whatever happens here is she's pretty much damned, but I do absolutely agree with everybody here that, that she's not giving really good answers. I prepared people for select committee, which is kind of the English version of of of, of this. And uh, and she isn't, in my view, she isn't well prepared for what's going to happen in this situation. Uh, the best preparation would be knowing just how badly this is going to go and resigning beforehand so you never have to do it because it doesn't look, there's nothing nice about this. 
But being a good bureaucrat, throwing yourself on your sword so the next person down doesn't have to deal with it might be a brilliant move. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There's 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 you taking the sword because in, in English terms, you get a knighthood later on. It's like you throw yourself on your sword right now and you will be sir whatever. Right. Uh, in, in in five years' time, when everybody's forgotten about this, you will be repaid for this one because you do not want it to go up. There are people undoubtedly in that room potentially asking questions or who answer to to to, to people involved in this who maybe have been told, you take this person down, they're going to go down, and then it goes no further. And we reset and we start again on this. It's a possibility. I don't know whether that's true, but it's a possibility. Uh, is that everybody? That's yeah. It. Wait till yeah. you see this new guy. I'm telling you, this new guy, he's he's awesome. He looks the part, man. That's the guy you'd want in charge, is this new is this new guy they've got. Well, we'll, like we'll see until he messes up as well. Let's see. Let's see. No, what, let's see what. <laughs> nice, nice square jaw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he does. He looks just like he looks he looks just, just the guy. Stage. He is, I'm telling they you. They call man. that the, the Gonian spread. All right. You watch your mouth, mister. Let me point you to something else, uh, which is the building that the shooter was perched on, seen here. This building is called the AGR building. I'm sure that you're familiar with it. Um, it's no more than 150 yards from the stage where Donald Trump stood. Yet the security perimeter was drawn such that the AGR building was placed outside of it. Director Cheadle, according to the Washington Post, the AR st AR-15 styled rifle used in the shooting had, had a range of 400 to 600 yards, and therefore the AGR building is, was clearly within rifle range of the stage, correct? Yes. NBC News has reported that in the days before the rally, the Secret Service had identified the building as a vulnerability that required special attention, correct? That's reporting from NBC? Yes. So I am still looking into an active investigation. I know, but it's been nine days. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, should, you should know that, right? And yet, despite the fact that the AGR building was in rifle range of the stage and it was flagged as a vulnerability, this building was put outside of the Secret Service's security perimeter. And I, I, I respectfully submit the security, Secret Service must expand its security perimeter to account for the kinds of weapons that can be used outside the perimeter to endanger the protectees inside the perimeter, ma'am. Let me turn your attention to some conspiracy theories that have been uh, circulating and ask you to uh, comment on them. First, you have not found evidence that the incident was a staged shooting, right? Correct. And you haven't found evidence that this was a result of a conspiracy of high-ranking government officials, correct? Correct. And you have not found evidence that this incident was, in fact, directed or perpetrated by a foreign state or entity, right? And, and that's the last question, but I'll let the director answer that, please. Not at this time. Thank you. I yield. You can imagine them saying, you know what we need here? We need a proper square-jawed guy that'll make everybody go, oh, it's okay. Nobody will get this shot. This is the guy. He got me. He got yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. It's working. It's working. Casting. Casting. Yeah, central, yeah casting. central casting. Yeah. He's perfect, man. Yeah. Director Cato, would you agree that this is the most serious security lapse since President Reagan was shot in 1981 of the Secret Service? Yes, sir, I would. And, you know, do you know what Stuart Knight did when he was in charge at the time of the Secret Service? Do you know what he did afterwards? He remained on duty. He resigned. He resigned. And Stuart Knight was not a Democratic appointee or a Republican appointee. Look, I'm not questioning your judgment. I, and I just don't think this is partisan. If you have an assassination attempt on a president, a former president, or uh, a candidate, you need to resign. That's what Stuart Knight did. He was a Republican appointee, and he took responsibility. And I, I think you need to reflect. This is not a question of you. It's a question of the American people. You cannot go leading a Secret Service agency when there is an assassination attempt on a presidential candidate. I would, I would say that about anyone who uh, is running. And so I guess my question to you is, what's the difference between your position and what Stuart Knight did? 
what I will tell you, sir, is that I am dedicated to finding the answers to what happened. And like every Secret Service agent, we don't shirk from our responsibilities. I will remain on and be responsible to the agency, to this committee, to the former president, and to the American public. But is, is there a reason you wouldn't just do what Stuart Knight did after the Reagan uh, assassination attempt? I believe that I provided an answer. There's, there's nothing more that you have to say? I mean, do you really believe at this moment, given how divided the country is and the questions asked, that your service in this role is the best for the nation? I mean, I, I'm not saying you can't do public service again, you can't do something else again. Do you really genuinely in your heart believe that you being in this role is what's right for America at this moment? I mean, do you, do you think there are people who are Trump supporters who have confidence in you? The one thing that the, we've got to have agencies in this country that are transcend politics, that have the confidence of independents, Democrats, Republicans, progressives, conservatives. Do you really believe that the majority of this country has confidence in you right now? I believe that the country deserves answers and I am committed to finding those answers and providing those answers. Well, I, well look, I believe, Director Schittel, that you should resign. I think there are colleagues on both sides of the aisle who believe that and I hope you'll consider it. All right, uh, Greg, what do you got? This is a good one because I think she already knows she's going to quit right here. Um, there's a couple of other places that she probably could have quit and it might've been a good move when Mace was attacking her and say, you wanna use my five minutes to resign? <laughs> might've been a good move, but I see re resignation and acceptance of the fact as this guy starts talking. I think I even see a little chin boss and I see that when people accept a fact a lot of times when they don't want it, can also be shame. Chase, you always point out the shame piece. But she does that at the same time, she clicks her pen, closes her eyes, and there's a slight grimace of disdain or acceptance. It's really weird to me that she comes in here and th this is, if today I were king of secret service and something happened to a president, I might go, what happened the last time this happened and go figure out how the government had treated that person. Apparently she didn't because she didn't know the answer when he asked and she said, yeah, stayed at his post. Nope, he quit. And then she goes down this whole path when they're asking her about resigning. Why don't you resign? She answers it like it's a job interview question, which is really awkward. This is not body language, but she starts going down a list of, you know, a, a Boy Scout is boom, boom, boom. She says she gives a list of traits of a good Secret Service person. She should say, look, until I'm done with this, I don't think anybody else can do the job or something like that. And he sees it as well. You see that contempt as one side of his face rises as he asks, what do you really believe? This is an interesting interchange that I think telegraphs the fact she's going to quit two days later, but you guys may see something different. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I agree. So the same body language stuff there. And it's interesting that uh, her and President Biden were both saying, I'm going to stay on. I'm not resigning. And, and lo and behold. But I've got a wild hair here to not talk about the clip, but just to talk about when you when you look at Washington, D.C., it's like a magnet for people who are really driven by power and recognition. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. Ambition's great. It pushes people to do badass stuff. But there's a catch there. If that ambition isn't balanced with real commitment to doing what's right, it can lead to some severely narcissistic behavior. And in the world of, of politics where everybody or every move you make is under the microscope. There's an intense pressure to maintain your image and hold on to power. And this can make uh, politicians, I think, extremely cautious about how they're seen by the public and their peers, just putting them, they're putting their own reputation ahead of making tough decisions. And then there's the echo chamber effect that's happening all over DC, just being surrounded by people all the time who just feed into your sense of importance. And that can skew your perspective unbelievably. And it becomes all about surviving politically and using whatever means necessary, which can really entrench some deep narcissistic stuff. And this whole dynamic, in my opinion, can create a culture where decisions are more about scoring political points or grabbing headlines than actually doing what's good. And it's a really tricky cycle. And I think anybody in a leadership position needs to be aware of that. 
So if you look a little bit deeper, these people probably grew up this way. They prioritized reputation over the greater good, most likely for the better part of their whole life. So when it's time to swear into office, they're not learning a new set of behaviors here. They're, these patterns have been recurring for a, a re pretty long time, usually since like middle school, high school is when, when we're seeing this stuff. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I, I I love this question, which is kind of which I'll kind of pricey as you know, is this the, the the worst failure of the Secret Service? And she easily goes, yeah, which is such a quick answer that something in me inside inside me goes, there probably is a worst that we don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and the questioner doesn't really, you know, again, this is not the way to ask to find out if this is the worst. He's, he's putting forward the idea. Do you want to say yes or no to this? Essentially. So binary questions will get you binary answers and they won't necessarily ever get you to the truth of it. And my expectation is, is the public here are looking at this going, this is a time where our representatives are going to get to the truth. And of course, there's nothing about this situation that would ever get to any to any truth. Um, well, why she says she says she has a res she's responsible to that committee. She's responsible to that committee, but she doesn't necessarily say that she's answerable to that committee. And the two things are very different. There, there should be potentially no reason why she should legitimately say anything to them, even up to the point, you know, Chase, that, that she would say, hey, something awful went on here. That, she, that there may be a reasoning yeah. for her to never even say, admit to that. And if that makes her look cold and heartless and then some of her responsibility might actually be well if that's the way it looks that's the way it looks because that's what i signed up for i signed up for secrecy because it's the secret service and i serve secretly not obtusely it's not the obtuse service the obtuse protection service they'd be in wigs they'd have like you know joseph and his amazing technical dream coat kind of stuff on you'd know they were coming you know they were there. Be nothing secret about them at all. This is the secret service, and so she's being very secretive. And so to the point of, I can't even work out who that service answers to. Like, who will they give an absolute um, uh, factual report to? I, I don't know. I don't. Mayorkas. Mayorkas. Right. Right. And so, and so, that I, my guess is, Greg, that person is cleared, and and. That's who they answer to. And any idea that they'd answer publicly is 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 a nonsense, as far as I can see. Uh, that's, the, that's the most British description of the Secret Service I've ever heard. <laughs> <in my life. laughs> right. Very secret. Literal, literal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you guys hear this storm? No. no. It's storming so bad, lightning and stuff, and Hattie's freaking out. So that's oh, why yeah. she keeps Poor trying thing. to climb up here. Okay, I, hate it. I keep punching her in the head and making her stop, though. We can tell. Yeah, who's is, am I last or who's up next? Scott, are you next? Oh, it's me. Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Oh, no, that's totally cool. So uh, she's still braced here. Her voice voice tone is strong. You know, so that that which is kind of odd. Well, it's not if you're fighting somebody. It's it's not kind of odd because I think this answer is prepared. I think she had this one ready to go, and she adapts with that pen and it's still clicking it. But she's compressing her lips. We're seeing. Um, what I would, I don't know if I call it lip grip because quite often we see this this happening. We're, we're seeing um, uh, disappearing lips usually in in um, congressional hearings. Almost every time someone's integrity is in question, we see that thing where they go, go and they disappear. We don't see that once here. We do see the the compressed lips, the lip grip, but still, it, it's I don't know what's happening because usually we see that every time when that's happening and that's missing from here. So I think that's really odd. Um, also, we see an expression of contempt jump in there for a little bit. Um, what else? It's so tough to find them on these because we don't see a whole lot of her. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it there. Got nothing new other than what you guys are talking about. Plus this dog's driving me nuts. Greg, do you think she signs something equivalent to the British official secrets act? Guaranteed. Director Cato, would you agree that this is the most serious security lapse since President Reagan was shot in 1981 of the Secret Service? 
Um, yes, sir, I would. Uh, um, and, you know, do you know what Stuart Knight did when he was in charge at the time of the Secret Service? Do you know what he did afterwards? He remained on duty. He resigned. He resigned. And Stuart Knight was not a Democratic appointee or a Republican appointee. Look, I'm not questioning your judgment. I, and I just don't think this is partisan. If you have an assassination attempt on a president, a former president, or uh, a candidate, you need to resign. That's what Stuart Knight did. He was a Republican appointee, and he took responsibility. And I, I think you need to reflect. This is not a question of you. It's a question of the American people. You cannot go leading a Secret Service agency when there is an assassination attempt on a presidential candidate. I would, I would say that about anyone who uh, is running. And so I guess my question to you is, what's the difference between your position and what Stuart Knight did? What I will tell you, sir, is that I am dedicated to finding the answers to what happened. And like every Secret Service agent, we don't shirk from our responsibilities. I will remain on and be responsible to the agency, to this committee, to the former president, and to the American public. But is, is there a reason you wouldn't just do what Stuart Knight did after the Reagan uh, assassination attempt? I believe that I provided an answer. There's, there's nothing more that you have to say? I mean, do you really believe at this moment, given how divided the country is and the questions asked that your service in this role is the best for the nation? I mean, I, I'm not saying you can't do public service again, you can't do something else again. Do you really genuinely in your heart believe that you being in this role is what's right for America at this moment? I mean, do you, do you think there are people who are Trump supporters who have confidence in you? The one thing that the, we've got to have agencies in this country that are transcend politics, that have the confidence of independents, Democrats, Republicans, progressives, conservatives. Do you really believe that the majority of this country has confidence in you right now? I believe that the country deserves answers and I am committed to finding those answers and providing those answers. Well, I, well look, I believe, Director Schittle, that you should resign. I think there are colleagues on both sides of the aisle who believe that and I hope you'll consider it. This is, I don't know who prepared you for this. I don't know how many times you've testified in front of Congress. But a president was almost assassinated live on television, not just for Americans, but for the world to see. And this being your first opportunity, I understand there's an ongoing investigation. I understand there's things that you can not talk about. But the, the idea that we're getting less than you did on television is something that Democrats, independents, or Republicans are gonna find unacceptable. My high school, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, was on the list of mass shootings that Representative Rank Raskin held up. That very day, the school resource officer, a police officer, did not run into the building. He hid in the stairwell while the shooter was in the building. He stayed outside, never helped, okay? He also directed other officers who showed up on the scene not to go into the building. When it was determined that the failures in response and training and that the sheriff fired nobody in his agency, Governor DeSantis then removed that sheriff. I supported the removal. So here's my question. You said there's gonna be accountability. I understand you don't wanna give us names. When you say that, are you telling the committee that once it's concluded, you're prepared to fire the people on the ground who made poor decisions that day? I'm prepared to take the actions necessary. No, no, that's, that, that, that's nonsense, okay? Accountability, the failure was human. That doesn't mean they're bad people, it means they failed that day and a president was almost, a former president was almost assassinated, okay? Are you prepared to fire the human failure on the ground, yes or no? When you have the names of where those failures were, they're people, it's not like a piece of technology failed, it was people who failed that day. Are you prepared to fire them? I don't have an answer as to whether it Well was then how people. can there be accountability if you're not prepared to fire someone, and the reason why your name is gonna be the person who's held accountable, the reason why members in this committee are calling for resignation and I join in that, or for the president to fire you, is because you're saying there's gonna be accountability, but you can't commit that people are gonna get fired. Let me ask this question a different way. If Trump had been assassinated that day, if the gunman had succeeded, 
okay, would you have come and tendered your resignation? I would still be sitting here because I would want to ensure the integrity of the investigation. Totally understand that's a fair answer that you would have set up that process, but would you have had the honor to come in front of the committee and say, a president was assass former president was assassinated on my watch, there should be new leadership? I think that I have admitted that there was No, no, that's what I'm asking. Would you have failure? tendered your resignation if he had been killed? That occurred on my watch, and I am accountable for that. Okay, but would you have tendered your resignation if he had been killed? I think that I've admitted that I've taken accountability and will take responsibility. Okay. Well, let me ask a, I want to follow up on Representative Connolly's question in which he asked about guns and, and you were not willing to commit that that makes your job harder. This is not about the Second Amendment. If there are over 400 million guns on the streets, if all of those guns were machine guns, would that make your job harder to protect people? Again, I think weapons that if, are out there. If all of those guns job. were rocket propelled grenades, would that make your job harder? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, thank you. Perfect. <laughs> it's, this is not a trick question. Thank you. Okay. I, I won't ask the other 15 things I was going to do. I was going to do drone strikes, but it's okay. So that's all we were asking. It, it creates a challenging environment. It has nothing to do with the Second Amendment or people's rights, but it does make your job harder. So credit to Representative Connolly for asking that question. All right, Chase, what do you got? I teach interrogation. Uh, there's not a whole lot of new body language here, so let me just walk you through some questions that I think may have produced a little bit different response here. Uh, who is competent enough to have the information that we're looking for? Can you identify somebody that is competent enough? Or who on your team has the information we're willing to, uh, that we're asking for that would be willing to provide it? Or do you think the majority of information should come from the U.S. government or the media for uh, and random cell phone people? Where do you think information should, should flow to the public? Uh, do you think people should trust strangers with cell phones and the news media more than the United States government? And then you back them into a corner that way, back her into a corner. Uh, do you think a failure to be honest and forthcoming is why people don't trust the government very much? And then another question. You seem to really struggle with facts. Who should we talk to that has the intellect and competence to handle this information? Or why is it that Twitter and MSNBC seem to have more information than you do? Or one of these, you could say, if a child answered a question like that, we would obviously know that they're lying or avoiding things. And is it possible we can get you to answer like an adult? Uh, would you agree that as director, part of your job is directing? Would you agree to that? Uh, would you agree that the people deserve to know these things or that we should, do you think we should hide it from them? Do you think we should hide this information from the people and just get get her to commit to it publicly? And if she says, no, I don't think we should hide it from the people, then then she needs to answer those questions. So I wish uh, if you're in Congress, give us a holler. We'll give you like a three page thing of questions that uh, are targeted to the behavior of the person that you're about to be interviewing. And we'll do it for you on the House. Well, yeah. I'll do it on the House. I can't speak for these three guys. Hey. I'm in. All right. Mark? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you, you'll have to use it really quickly because your lifespan is, is really, <laughs> it's really like you get voted out every four years. So it's like, and that's what happens with the bureaucrat. Oh, the, the, the bureaucrat too. Okay, so the bureaucrat sits there going, yeah, thanks for your questions, knowing that they're getting pensioned that's out. It and into another job because their yeah. lifespan is way, way longer because they, <laughs> and the politician, their lifespan is that of a firefly. <laughs> so yeah, you can have yeah. the training and enjoy using it, I don't know, at the burger joint that you end up working at later yeah. on. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, um, what have I got? Well, look, actually, here's here's somebody uh, in that particular committee who who suddenly has a moment of enlightenment. Uh, they say, "I understand that there are things you cannot talk about." Thank you, thank you very much for for, for coming out with that. That there are things that cannot 
be talked about. Now, I get it. There are things she is potentially not talking about, but is she not talking about them because she cannot talk about them or doesn't want to talk about them? And if she doesn't want to talk about them or cannot talk about them, why does she not want to or why she why she cannot. This particular person doesn't say why they understand that, because they could go, look, I understand because of X, Y, and Z that there are things that you cannot talk about here. They could also go, but I do understand there are things that you can and should talk about. And so that's what I'm going to question you on. So now we've managed to narrow it down somewhat on that. Well, so no. that's, an that's another one. Another one gone today. Uh, so, so... <laughs> Uh, you know, there, there's, again, there's there's showboating here, but somebody has managed to get it down to the factual nature of there is clearly going to be stuff that cannot be talked about and stuff that can, and I would like the two to be differentiated. Um, there, that's all I got on that one. Greg, what do you got on this one? So I'm going to tie in exactly what the two of you said. <clears throat> there's a thing called the source lead. When you're interrogating someone and they bring up something, it's hard for them not to talk about it. What has she talked about the entire time here? SOP. It is standard process for us. It is standard process for us. It's good. We're going to talk about that because you're hiding and you're fan dancing. You're using the investigation as a way to hide. I'm going to say, who's responsible for investigating this? Oh, you. Then tell me how this investigation works at the highest level. I don't need details. I don't need anything compromising, but you keep bringing it up. It must be important. And you tell me in generalities, you're allowed to talk about X, Y, and Z. Let's talk in generalities about how this thing works. If you really want information, that's the way you go about it. To your point, Chase, then you paint her into a corner using approaches and, and psychological pressure. But simply asking, okay, you keep bringing up the investigation. Let's talk about what is federal process for that investigation. Who owns it? Is it your IG? Is it you? Is it somebody else? Because you're going to force her to throw somebody else under the bus or take accountability. And that is a no-win situation. So then we'll find out what a real motivation is. There are a couple of really good pieces of body language I don't want to pass up here. There's a great illustrator that is actually a regulator used as an illustrator by the guy who's asking questions. He go, he raises his finger and he goes, I understand. That's a regulator as, and it's also performing as an illustrator. He's controlling the conversation and at the same time punctuating what he's thinking. She's hiding behind the process. She keeps doing this fan dancing thing. She's barriered like all hell now, and she's turtling. Her body has shrunk since the beginning. And the, probably the best part of this entire thing is her mouth hanging open when she's caught flat-footed at one point in some pseudo shock. Let me tell you, when you've done something really screwed up in business, and you try to hide it, usually you end up getting whacked. So she should expect that. I had a really good example one time. I was selling a company, carving a company out of the company we owned. And we had 600 locations that needed to be licensed on Monday morning under a new legal entity. So just all you need to know is 600 new licenses by Monday. I called the attorney that was doing it on a Thursday, said, hey, are these going to be ready? He said, yes. I didn't call him on a Friday. Monday morning, we were missing 600 business license. Now, that's a pretty big deal when, you, when you're a big company. So I had to call my boss and say, hey man, you might want to fire me because I made a mistake. And he said, how are you going to fix it? And I said, there are already people in every one of those offices applying for a license right now. I said, why would I fire you? But he could have easily just said, who's next? Who knows how to run this project instead of you? That's the way you should approach something, especially, especially with the gravity of this situation. This is not business licenses. This is a living human being. And something could have gone a lot worse than one person. God rest the guy who died. Something could have gone a lot worse than Trump being shot if Trump had died from this because we are at such polarized ends. Who knows where that could have led? You would think that somebody would stand up and go, look, I made a mistake and here's how I'll be out in no time. That's all I got. Uh, Scott, what do you got? You guys covered everything. I've got nothing new that we haven't seen already, so I'll move on. This is, I don't know who prepared you for this. I don't know how many times you've testified in front of Congress. But a president was almost assassinated live on television, not just for Americans, but for the world to see. And this being your first opportunity, I understand there's an ongoing investigation. I understand there's things that you can not talk about, but the, the idea that we're getting less than you did on television is something that Democrats, independents, or Republicans are going to find unacceptable. 
My high school, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, was on the list of mass shootings that Representative Rank Raskin held up. That very day, the school resource officer, a police officer, did not run into the building. He hid in the stairwell while the shooter was in the building. He stayed outside, never helped, okay? He also directed other officers who showed up on the scene not to go into the building. When it was determined that the failures in response and training and that the sheriff fired nobody in his agency, Governor DeSantis then removed that sheriff. I supported the removal. So here's my question. You said there's gonna be accountability. I understand you don't wanna give us names. When you say that, are you telling the committee that once it's concluded, you're prepared to fire the people on the ground who made poor decisions that day? I'm prepared to take the actions necessary. No, no, that's, that, that, that's nonsense, okay? Accountability, the failure was human. That doesn't mean they're bad people, it means they failed that day and a president was almost, a former president was almost assassinated, okay? Are you prepared to fire the human failure on the ground, yes or no? When you have the names of where those failures were, they're people, it's not like a piece of technology failed, it was people who failed that day. Are you prepared to fire them? I don't have an answer as to whether it Well, then how people. can there be accountability if you're not prepared to fire someone? And the reason why your name is going to be the person who's held accountable, the reason why members in this committee are calling for resignation and I join in that or for the president to fire you is because you're saying there's going to be accountability, but you can't commit that people are going to get fired. Let me ask this question a different way. If Trump had been assassinated that day, if the gunman had succeeded, okay, would you have come and tendered your resignation? I would still be sitting here because I would want to ensure the integrity of the investigation. Totally understand that's a fair answer that you would have set up that process, but would you have had the honor to come in front of the committee and say, a president was assassinated, former president was assassinated on my watch, there should be new leadership? I think that I have admitted that there was No, no, that's what I'm asking. Would you have tendered your resignation if he had been killed? That occurred on my watch, and I am accountable for that. Okay, but would you have tendered your resignation if he had been killed? I think that I've admitted that I've taken accountability and will take responsibility. Okay. Well, let me ask a... I want to follow up on Representative Connolly's question in which he asked about guns, and, and you were not willing to commit that that makes your job harder. This is not about the Second Amendment. If there were over 400 million guns on the streets, if all of those guns were machine guns, would that make your job harder to protect people? Again, I think weapons that if, are out there. If all of those guns were rocket propelled grenades, would that make your job harder? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> it's, this is not a trick question. Thank you. Okay. I, I won't ask the other 15 things I was going to do. I was going to do drone strikes, but it's okay. So that's all we were asking. It, it creates a challenging environment. It has nothing to do with the Second Amendment or people's rights, but it does make your job harder. So credit to Representative Connolly for asking that question. All right, we've watched the body language of, of Cheadle, and we've made some decisions about it. Mark, what do you think we've seen up to this point? Yeah, so really lovely to see. I think the committee got to look angry on the public's behalf and they got a result in that somebody resigned. Uh, it's most likely they were going to resign anyway. I don't think it came out of that particularly particular inquiry. Um, I think it was probably already decided and every every party got the result that they were looking for. Somebody resigns, somebody new comes in looking looking clean and fresh and much better, confidence is restored, committee look aggressive, look, they look uh, you know, as, as they should on behalf of the people, all, all good. Did we get any answers about anything? No. Did I expect any answers? No, not at, not at all. I wouldn't expect it at all, as I've said before. Uh, it's the Secret Service. But outside of that, look, somebody resigned, and I think it was undoubtedly right that that person uh, resigned. However, just as a general rule, um, uh, responsibility and account taking responsibility and accountability doesn't always mean you have to resign. It's not it's not the fait accompli of you taking responsibility and accountability for something that happened. Sometimes there's other ways to do it, and I think currently it's very easy to go resign. That will fix 
everything rather than go, look, what is the way you would fix this right now? It's it's very prevalent in politics. If you fail to win an election, it's now generally considered, well, you'll just resign as the leader and you'll never run again. It's like, wow, you've wasted something of a of a learning opportunity. And now in this case, it's not a learning opportunity. It was something incredibly critical happened here. Uh, it's a massive, massive failure. But I think, don't you ever think that because something goes wrong, that that's your signal to go, well, then that's it. I I resign. That isn't necessarily the only way to be responsible and accountable. Chase, what do you got on this one? Great, great point. I hope people got that. Uh, It's important to, to understand that, that that's not the only answer. And just going back to ancient Rome here for a second, there were these public ceremonies designed for catharsis to channel a lot of the public anger anger and blame. And today we see a a very similar theater in our politics. It's, It's very much a theater there. And we're shaming somebody post-incident provides kind of a false sense of justice and resolution. And I think the spectacle pacifies the public as a whole. And just as a key point here, people who excel at deception, deflection, and and misdirection thrive in environments where accountability is scarce. I'll leave it at that. Greg, what do you got? The irony to me is that the highest levels of accountability typically are in places that people will say, I can't tell you, I'd have to kill you. The people that don't know. Everyone who works in that world knows what a 15-6 investigation, all those investigations that can happen to you as a result of mishandling information, lose a clearance, you're gone, you can be removed. Mark, to your point, though, my whole point of telling that story about 600 business licenses, the guy was like, why would I let you go? Who's going to do what you do? You made a mistake. But owning up to a mistake, taking accountability and responsibility is different from always having to throw yourself on the sword. At the end of the day, if you're masking and hiding information at this level about something this big and you're not even sharing the process about how you get it, shame on you. On the other hand, if all you're doing is asking leading questions to make a political stance, also shame on you. I always say, you know, business is a lot like making sausage. You don't want to look at either one of them. Scott, what do you got? I, I really like this one because it's an example of seeing someone just being wailed on, but but saying the same answer every time. What they were told to do, she's actually doing it. I think she's, you know, staying right on point there. So I think it's a great example of that. All right, fellas, thanks is another good one, and we'll see you next time. The behavior panel. All right. Quite often at the end of these episodes, I'll add something from the show that didn't get in. There'll be somebody laughing, somebody talking, somebody goofing around, or something funny, something different, right? So we were talking about that a couple minutes ago, or halfway through this episode, and Chase had a good idea. Chase, what's the idea? So you've been hanging out with us for a while, and now we're at the end of the episode. Most people won't make it this far. So we, you and us, are going to play a prank on everyone watching this video who didn't get to this point in the show. What we're going to do is leave a comment down below that involves pineapples, rattlesnakes, and the CIA. And you can specifically mention the word pineapple rattlesnake as as a uh, CIA pineapple rattlesnake just to make people wonder what the hell they're missing. And they won't be able to see it throughout the whole show unless they stick around to this exact part. Right. And we know you're a true panelist because you're still watching. So there's that. All right, then we'll see you next time. This was a good one.